if you've ever been part of a band, you probably know that there's typically a little bit of tension between the members. It's a very complicated relationship. It's like it's almost like dating more than one person altogether. It's it's as hard as it is to have a relationship with one person. You know, a band typically have what three, four, five people at least, and you have to get along and make the relationship work long term. So it's a very interesting challenge, and I think a lot of times, um, ba- you know, music projects fail because of the relationship. And the reason is, if you don't feel good while you're writing songs or, or you know, working on music or practicing or recording, if you're not in a place of inspiration and feeling good, it becomes, it, it just, you know, what's the point of music? The, the music is, is emotional energy. So you're trying to, to, to share your love, your inspiration, your emotional energy with the world in a way that sets everyone else on fire. That's what you're trying to do. And if you're not able to do that within the group itself, unfortunately, whatever it is that your intention isn't being transmitted properly to the world. It's really important to maintain a relationship. Now, it's easy to say that, but it's hard to do. So, and I've learned the hard way. I had a band several years ago for a couple of years, Abscondo, and we made some good music, but we, you know, like any band, we had some tension and some personality, some personality issues. It's like any relationship. You know who's paying more money? There might be maybe there's a, there's a leader in the band that pays more for the money. There's some resentment that goes along with that. You know who gets to write the songs? There's some resentment that goes along with that. Who gets to sing more? There's, there's potentially some issues and some battles and resentment. And one of the things that I think I could have done a lot better is just been a little bit, just been more open. So you should go into practice without any firm agenda what has to get done according to your imagination and your mind just be open to these people let them have their own input and let it go in directions you don't necessarily plan because it has to be an open trust and relationship where anyone can express ideas and you can explore ideas find out whether it works or not and move on but if you're not able to you know, if you're going to go in there with a firm agenda, you're not listening to anyone, you're not even asking for feedback, you're saying, here's how it's going to be. No one's going to be happy. They're going to feel caged. They're not going to feel free. You want everyone in that band to feel free, totally accepted and valued as part of that project. The only way to do that is to let people have, you know, have their role, to give them a chance. And if you're going to spend more money and you're going to do more work than others, you know, you're doing that for your own reasons. And, and it's not fair to hold up resentment against someone else. It's like any relationship. Do what you're giving. You're giving your, of yourself into the relationship only what you decide and what you want to give. You know, you can't be guilted or shamed or manipulated into, into, into giving. At the same time, you can't expect everyone to feel the same call internally to give that you do. So I think... It's important, to, you know, not to be too attached to being famous or being hugely successful because it's such a long shot in music, especially these days. So, you know, it's like any art form. You have to go in there without expectations of result. Go in there with a good state of being. Be present. Be accepting. Be open. And that allows you to channel your best talent and your best work into that project. There's going to be hard feelings, you know, if someone says something that bothers you. It's like it's such a complicated relationship and especially in cases where you have two or three people teaming up against one. So it's important not to do that also, right? You, and it may feel that way. It could be just that you're, you had a bad idea and the other three people or four people will say, uh, we don't like this. That has to be okay. That's part of the process. That's why you have a band. Otherwise, just do a solo project. And that may be an option as well. That's what I did. I ultimately just decided to do a solo project because, because it's so difficult to maintain a band these days without, without a massive number, level of success and the ability to tour and generate enough money for the whole project. Money is a big issue for any band or any music project, and it gets more complicated if you have four or five guys to pay, plus a sound guy, plus a van to carry all your equipment. So let's just get real. Let's put the relationships first because that allows the best possible outcome. I don't think you're going to have 
a massively successful long-term project by by hitting people hard and forcing them into your into your box. Better just to come into the relationship just not so thick in the head, right? Just just let some gaps of thought come through. Let other people's ideas influence things. Go with it. Don't take things personally. Everyone has the same goal, which is to make the best possible music. So, you know, those are some ideas. I think it's an often overlooked area. We want to, you know, get on stage. We want to go in the studio and make some great music. But we don't always think about that relationship. And if you're entering into a band or forming a band, that's kind of a big deal. That's maybe the most important aspect is that relationship you have. Now, I'm grateful that the guys in my band, Abscondo, were still all very close. We may even reform someday. Who knows? But, you know, there were some things that I wish I had done better. And I think it comes down to spiritual awareness, you know, that awakening you go through as an individual where you learn to open your mind, open your heart, not take things personally, to project love, not ego, into relationships. And, boy, there's no better place for ego than on that stage or in that studio. So, if, you know, a spiritual practice. So many musicians who have been so famous, I don't want to name names, but if you think about... Uh, the lyrics, it's so spiritual, right? Even in, in rock music, and there's, there's a gospel sound that always tends to, come in, tends to come into music. So those who come to a place of, sp of spiritual awareness tend to be a lot more successful in music. The music sounds better, it comes from a different dimension, and also the relationship of that band is better. So there's a tip. If you want to be more successful in music, maybe don't, don't listen to me because I'm not that successful in music, but certainly you can listen to your favorite artists, listen to the lyrics, consider the fact that uh, any kind of spiritual awareness, what we're talking about here on this show and the Abscondo blog and everywhere else, it's all about strengthening relationships by making them more conscious, and that will certainly help with any musical project. By the way, if you're looking to start a band or form a band or join a band, one way you might do that is on the I Am By Info Being mobile app. It's all about meeting people. If you're looking for a drummer, looking for a guitarist or a vocalist or whatever, you can narrow it down to your, to your local area and you might end up meeting exactly the right person uh, to collaborate together. That's kind of the whole idea behind the I Am By Info Being app, to meet exactly the right people to fulfill any need. So check it out. Thanks a lot.